blew through here. Uh, I'm hoping that wherever you are, the storm wasn't too bad, that you just got wind, maybe not too much, or just got rain, not too much wind. Um, I want to review some of the things that were in the video that you watched, the crash course video, and also expand a little bit into some applications that the video didn't talk about. So enthalpy is what we're learning about. kind of the same thing as heat, that's going to be pretty accurate. Technically, it's the heat at a constant pressure, um, but all of the problems that we're going to solve are going to be at constant pressure, so I think it's okay if we sort of round that up. The symbol that we use for enthalpy is always going to be delta H. As the video said, we can talk about a change in enthalpy, but we can't talk about an actual value for enthalpy. The enthalpy equation that we're going to use is that the enthalpy for a reaction is equal to the sum of the coefficients of the products times the heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the coefficients of the reactants times the heat of formation of the reactants. This is one of those equations that looks much harder and scarier than it actually is. Let's start with a reaction. The reaction that I like to use here is the combustion of methane. We used this in gas stoichiometry just last week. And we will talk about how we can do heat stoichiometry here in just a second. So, we have methane gas reacting with two molecules of oxygen to create carbon dioxide gas and two waters. Generally speaking, when this reaction takes place, it's hot enough, because this reaction is exothermic, that we end up creating water vapor rather than liquid water. Okay, so if we want to find the delta H for this reaction, we can do it if we know the heats of formation of these substances. Where do you get the heats of formation? Where you get the heats of formation is you look them up. So you're going to find a link, you should have found a link with this video um, in that Google Classroom post to a page that has a lot of useful heats of formation. And that's something you're going to have to have accessible when you're doing the UT class problems, when you're doing the viewing quiz problems, when you're doing your quiz quiz problems. So I would, I would hang on to that link. Um, but those are not things that you're supposed to know, with one exception. So if I look in that chart, I'm going to find that the heat of formation of methane is minus 74.8 kilojoules per mole. The heat of formation of CO2 is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Now, when it comes to the water, I need to be careful because there are different numbers for liquid water and for water as a gas. And what do we have here? We have the gas. So we're going to need to use the, the number that goes with water in its gaseous state, which is minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole. What have I left out? I've left out oxygen. Why? Why didn't I put oxygen up here? Because I won't always find oxygen in the table. And that's because the delta HF is the heat required or released to create this substance from its elements in their standard state. This is oxygen's element in its standard state. So the heat of formation for any element is zero. Zero kilojoules per mole. All right, now we're ready to find the delta H for this reaction. Delta H is equal to, we're starting with the product side. We always start with the product side when we find delta H. So how many moles of carbon dioxide are there? 1 times, what is its heat of formation? Minus 393.5. I'm going to do a thing I don't often do, and I'm going to leave the units off of the numbers right here. Um, I think it's simpler sometimes, we don't get as confused, if we have fewer things in the, uh, in the equation to look at. Plus, the coefficient for the water is 2 times, its heat of formation is minus 241.8, that's also in kilojoules per mole, so those are the products, and sometimes we put big brackets around the products, because from that we're going to subtract the reactants. 1 times the heat of formation of methane, which is negative 74.8, and then plus 0. So that's all there is to it. So this is really simple arithmetic. Most of the time, this isn't even an algebra problem. This is just following along and doing the arithmetic. There are a couple of places that we're likely to get into trouble, though. As we're, as we're putting these pieces here together, we have to keep track of whether we're multiplying or adding. And then more importantly, out here, we're going to subtract a negative number. What's going to happen to those two negative signs? 
they're going to cancel out. So we're going to end up adding. So when I plug all of this into a calculator, I get that the delta H value for this reaction is minus 802 kilojoules per mole. So that means that every time one mole of reaction takes place, 802 kilojoules of energy are released. That's a fair amount of energy. And this shouldn't surprise us. This negative sign tells us that this is an exothermic reaction. We know this is an exothermic reaction because every time we light a Bunsen burner in the lab, methane gas is what's coming out of that burner, and we do this chemical reaction because we want to use the heat that it produces. So let me just write this number up here. Because this is an exothermic reaction, we will sometimes also say that heat is a product of the reaction, and sometimes you'll even see that we'll write it with the products. So we might even just say that this reaction takes methane and carbon or methane and oxygen, makes carbon dioxide, water, and 802 kilojoules of heat. You'll notice I've, I've dropped the, the per mole off there because when it's written as the reaction, it's, in, it's implied that it's per one mole of reaction. All right, also I don't need the negative sign because it's already on the product side. But that's not the way we write it most commonly. Generally, we just write the delta H up there. Okay, so now we have a delta H value. That was our first goal today. Second goal is to figure out what can we do with that delta H value. And here's the first one. If I combust, oh, let's say 55 grams of methane. How much heat will I produce? Now, I'm hoping the wording of that problem reminds you of something. I'm hoping what it reminds you of is a stoichiometry problem. If I combust this much of this, how much of this other thing will happen? Every stoichiometry problem we've worked so far has had two chemical substances. It turns out we can treat heat in much the same way that we treat the chemical substances when it comes to a stoichiometry problem. I'm just going to work this one, and then we'll talk about how exactly I did it. I'm going to start with my 55 grams of methane. And the first thing I'm going to have to do, if I'm given an amount in grams and a stoichiometry problem, is convert it to moles. Well, I already found the molar mass of methane, and it's 16.042 grams for every one mole. Now, delta H is in kilojoules per mole, and that mole is one mole of the reaction as written, which means it would be one mole of methane, two moles of oxygen, one mole of carbon dioxide, or two moles of water vapor. So I need to go from one mole of methane to one mole of reaction. And then the delta H value tells me that I'm going to give off 802 kilojoules of heat for every one mole of reaction. So these steps should remind you of a stoichiometry problem. We went from grams to moles, we went from moles to moles, and then we went from moles to whatever it was we were asked for, which in this case was heat. So 55 divided by 16.042 times negative 802 gives me minus 2749.657. But are we done? Nope, we're not sure. How many sig figs does this final answer get to have? As is often the case, it's determined by that first number we started with, and it's only two, so negative 2,700. If we cancel everything out, grams cancel grams, moles of CH4 cancel moles of CH4, moles of reaction cancel moles of reaction, and we're left with kilojoules. So that's the amount of heat that's released. Those are our units, and this is an exothermic reaction, and we had well over one mole's worth of methane, so it's not a surprise that we gave off quite a lot of heat. All right? Now, you can imagine, I think, that if instead I wanted to know how much oxygen was required at STP. Um, actually, let's, let's do a slightly different problem. Let's, let's go with that idea, but set it up differently. Because I also want to, I want you to see how that moles of reaction can be a little bit more complicated. Let's 
let's do this. If this reaction creates 1,000, um, and we'll make that uh, 1,000 with three sig figs, 1,000 kilojoules of heat, how many liters of O2 at STP were used. Okay, so the amount we're starting with now is an amount of heat. And I have this word creates here. Creates means is given off, is produced, which means that when we write this in our reaction or in our stoichiometry, we're going to have to give this a negative sign because that's a thousand kilojoules of heat that left the reaction. Okay. The first step in every stoichiometry problem is to change the amount that we're given into moles. So we need a relationship between kilojoules and moles. We have that relationship. It's the delta H value for the reaction. So I'm going to multiply by this fraction. Only now I'm going to have to put the negative 802 in the denominator because that's what makes my kilojoules cancel. And the one mole here is one mole of reaction. So now we can figure out how many moles of reaction took place, but that's not what the problem asked us for. The problem asked us for liters of O2. So the next thing I need is a mole ratio. I need to go from moles of reaction to moles of O2. It's always going to be one mole of reaction when we're setting up a stoichiometry problem like this. But every time this reaction happens once, how many moles of O2 are involved? Two. Two moles of O2 are involved. That, that number two comes from the balanced equation, just like the number in that mole ratio has always come from the balanced equation. All right? So we've changed it from heat to O2, but were we asked about moles of O2? No, we were asked about volume. So we're going to remember our, our nifty trick, which is that at STP, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. One of the more handy numbers in all of chemistry. All right, so negative 1,000 divided by negative 802 times 2 times 22.4 gives me 55.860. How many significant figures should we keep? We had 3 in the beginning, 3 in the delta H, 3 in our 22.4, and our mole ratio is exact, so we get to keep 3. 55.9, what was our unit? Kilojoules cancel, moles of reaction cancel, moles of O2 cancel, and we're left with liters of O2. We don't have a really strong feel at this point about what kinds of numbers are reasonable, but that's more than a mole's worth of heat. If we do a mole of reaction, we only get 800 kilojoules, and we had 1,000. Um, and every mole of O2 would have been 22 liters, but we needed two moles of O2 for each reaction. So, yes, the number seems reasonable. All right, so now you know how to find a delta H value if you're given delta H of formation values, and you also know that you can just look those numbers up. You also have seen a couple of examples of how we can solve problems with delta H. This should give you enough now to get started on the using quest assignment. It's not a giant one, but it's also not a small one, and you'll be better off if you go ahead and get going. Oh, your secret question. Um, what's your favorite kind of dessert? So your secret question for this viewing quiz is, what's your favorite kind of dessert? Um, have a good night.